guys. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our positivity webinar, um, you know, during our COVID crisis. So I want to welcome Trevor from Provocateur Images, Shiri from Focus Studios and Design, and Francine B from Francine B Photography. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm really excited to be with you all tonight. It's been um, sort of a very quiet couple of weeks and very surreal. And Trevor called me the other day and said, you know, why don't we do like a webinar and talk to everybody and sort of try to get the juices flowing and get together. And I thought that's great. So um, before we begin, I just want to go through some housekeeping. Um, we're using a GoToMeeting uh, platform here. And so we just asked everyone to turn off their webcams. And I've turned on the audio only for the four, four of us here. And later, please do feel free to uh, type in some questions in the chat box and um, we'll take it from there. So the, the topics today is basically giving out the message that we want to stay positive and do not despair, right? And so we're going to talk about mental health. We're going to talk about business and marketing. And we're going to talk about education. Hey, Hamish. So we're just asking everyone to turn off their webcam so that we can have just the four of us on the screen because I'm not able to turn everyone's off. Otherwise, it's going to get like really big. Alex, you too. If possible, can you turn off the webcam? And so why don't we begin with Trevor? And we're going to talk about mental health and how we're coping through all this. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I mean, when I messaged you, Patricia, this was this was really something that I had, I don't know, I, I guess I was in the doom and gloom phase. Um, yep. I had cut my vacation short to yes. come back in time. Yes. Um, I was in complete quarantine for which just ended today, which I'm like, <laughs> wow, I, it's so different. Self-isolation and quarantine are completely different. Like, let me tell yep. you, they are... Night and day, actually, they're exactly the same. What am I talking about? <laughs> exactly. Well, you same. could even go out and get your own groceries. Yeah, but I already had groceries, so I haven't okay. really done anything That's new. Good. But um, in theory, it's different. But um, let's be honest. Um, I think the main thing is we all have to stay more positive when it comes to this. I know uh, a lot of us are kind of freaking out. We're going, how are we going to survive? How are we going to? Yep. How are we going to do what we need to do? Uh, like there's there's a lot of I think a lot of things that we're all scared about. Like I'm t I was terrified about my rent and at my studio and stuff. But you know what? There's things we can control and there's things we can't control. So I think the, the message I really wanted to come at this with was how what can we do with, which is within our control? And that's why we got these great group of people here who I kind of know very well. And you know we're gonna talk about that, but. If we're gonna talk mental health, I think that's where we have to start, right? Yeah. Um, mental health is one of those things where, you know, this it's it's easy to get down on yourself and, and stuff, but I, I mean, the things, that, here's just a couple tips I'm doing. Um, one, I am really trying to stay away from the news cycle, except for what is immediately important to me, checking, you know, CBC or CNN or whatever platform you want, it's not a good thing, especially not before you go to bed. Because I was doing that and I wasn't sleeping. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, ah, what am I doing? What am I going to do? And then you're like, because there's no answers necessarily. And uh, it was stressing me out and I wasn't sleeping. So that's, that's my mental uh, tip number one. And I guess number two is uh, I was in Costa Rica. So I got used to getting up at 5 a.m. I would go surfing. Um, and then I'd walk back on the beach thinking about how well I fell off my board. And, you know, so that was the mindful exercise. And then later in the evening, I would go to yoga. And I really got used to that, I guess, uh, that, uh, that, that activity level in the day. Yeah. And when I first got home, I got out of it. So yeah. it was, I was thinking in a negative way. And then, so what I did was, aside from just removing myself from the news after about noon, um, yeah, I just I just also started to be more active. So I'm trying to go out for jogs, 
trying to do like more than two chin ups. It's really hard. I got like a little bar just over there and <laughs> it's, awesome. it's not exactly working, but I'm at two. I'm hoping for three tomorrow. So right. I'm, I'm, I've got, <laughs> I I've got a <laughs> Um, but, um, you know, the, the, I think the main thing is, is just stay active. Don't sit at home. Don't just do nothing. Um, yep. I mean, if you can be active in your house doing something like yoga or something mindful, pick a, pick something that isn't necessarily photography or, you know, like just, just do something to remove yourself from all of this and, and focus on that because I think that clarity and that mindfulness can be really, really helpful. That's, that's, that's my mental health tips that work for me, may not work for you. Those are great suggestions. I really like it, Trevor. Um, yeah, absolutely. Staying active for sure. And limiting news. Yeah, I watched and read way too many news articles. I know I should not have, but like I read everything honestly that I could get my hands on and then it got to a point where it was like it was sickening so I did stop and I gave myself like a few minutes to just read all the headlines and see if like there's anything I really needed to know and then I turned it off and then went back to my Netflix but that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> Francine, <laughs> Francine what do you what do you suggest we can do to help our mental health and our state of mind? So uh, my point it was um, that because we are creatives and like yes. our whole business is, is basically based on being creative um, mm -hmm. is to actually um, continue to shoot but do projects that do all the creative projects that you wanted to do that you just never had the time to do like go for nature walks and take your yeah. camera and like right you know um, I'm doing like a series, kind of like a, a photo series of um, like in quarantine. So I'm just doing it's like just like lifestyle of my kids who are going crazy. That's, that's um, great. But like it's, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah. yeah, like I'm not gonna ever use those images um, like for profit or like for my business. But like um, it just helps me be who we are. Like we are creative yeah. people. If we are not, if we yeah. do not continue. Creative, like we're gonna go crazy or we're gonna die like it's your gonna soul be cool. kind of idea right <laughs> yeah. like you just have to be who you are like continue to be who you are and and you know do things that you know make you happy and as photographers i feel like that's what made us happy in the first place or else yes. we wouldn't be doing it, yeah right for sure love so, it um, that's fine you also mentioned before that, you know, if we had things like that we thought about during the day, like to keep a journal or like a book of thoughts kind of thing. Do you remember, like, can you yeah, elaborate so on that? I definitely think like I have an ongoing, um, I have a ton of notebooks though, but, <laughs> but like basically like if you are, are, you know, in the shower or, you know, doing whatever it is that you're doing during the day, and you have an idea, like write it down. And guess what? You actually now have the time to explore that idea. It's not like a random idea that you just write down and then you get busy and bogged down and then you know you never come back to. Yeah. Because now's the time. Yeah. Like you have a really good idea. Like my, for example, the quarantine set of images that I'm doing, like that, you know, it's just it's just to kind of be active, like get your mind active. You have to feed your sure. mind and your just as much yeah. you have as much as you have to feed yourself physically like Trevor was saying because we're gonna die like, we have to do that like we have to be ourselves um, no, absolutely. Gonna... yeah, I yeah hear if you. you started recording some video of your kids and then voice over it later with like a David Attenborough voice it'd be like a wildlife documentary yeah I know I should that. that is amazing yes I will do that I started doing TikToks of them um, because I'm so bored <laughs> like I'm just I'm not bored like I'm so busy but with them but like there's not any camera stuff really going on awesome <laughs> thanks Francine thanks I I like it I like it a lot and it's true um you know photographers um you need to you need to get out there and do what your your soul loves right it'll bring you like little bits of joy and try to like move your mind away from the problems that we're all like literally facing right so i'm gonna go on to sherry sherry what you got for us girl <laughs> 
So um, my personality is I'm a planner. Everything I do is planning. So this whole unknown uh, definitely has me rattled because I think we all kind of go through waves of being positive and being negative. So one of the things that I'm kind of focusing on for the future, and there is a light at the end of this tunnel, for sure there's a light. And the truth is, I think it's actually going to be brighter than ever for us. I feel that this pandemic is literally going to be the boost in the photography industry. Like people are going to value us so much. Like think about like event photographers, all the yeah. events and the celebrations yeah. that people are going to want to get captured. Um, all the family, like the families now coming together of the grandparents sure. with the extended family portraiture. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Trevor said this yesterday, the newish babies that, um, <laughs> you know, that, that miss their, that miss their opportunity, but you know, it's, it's also going to push us. So I'm a newborn photographer. So, you know, it's going to push us creatively on how to photograph beautifully, you know, older babies. So all of this I feel is, is really going to, um, allow the clients to value us at which point will allow us to just you know, bloom and explode in creativity and just have our calendars fully, um, you know, booked and, and be in, in uh, demand of, of, you know, our art, uh, which is just such a nice thing to look forward to in such yeah. a dull every day of like bad the circumstances yeah. that are happening. Um, so yes. the big thing is, is try to stay positive. Um, the truth of the matter is, is no one, none of us are in this alone every single one of you us regardless right. of our For genre sure. yeah. are going through this hardship you know we're yeah, all we on are. different levels like some work From sure. home some have commercial studios but it doesn't matter we're all on the same playing field like we're all feeling it we need to stay positive we need to stay together we need to stay um you know as one you know and and just stay in your own lane stay focused on your tasks don't worry about what everyone else is doing and and just kind of keep your tasks you know at, at on hand on on how you're going to get through this right and right. that's kind of like I've, I've been pretty quiet in a lot of the forums because you know yeah. i'm going through stuff and i'm trying to just you know keep afloat myself and try to come up with ideas and stay focused yes. and you know no pun intended <laughs> um, you know, and, and I feel that, uh, you know, knowing that we have a huge future, like big explosion of just creativity. I love that. I love that you're so good. positive about it. Yeah. You know, like, you, it just, you know what, when you, when you said that to me earlier, when we we're planning for this and you're like, you know, we're all going to come through this. It's going to be great. There's going to be so much pent up demand for um, all the events that didn't happen during this, all, you know, how people, people are really going to appreciate the, you know, the, the pictures that they really treasured from their own childhood and the ones that they're going to take now with their families. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be, your message is just really heartwarming and I really appreciate it. So I'm just going to interrupt just for a second. And for anybody who's having audio issues, um, you can call in. There's a phone number in that email. Uh, and you can call in and listen to the audio. So if you're not getting a good feed, um, try to uh, call in. And someone's messaging that we could also try to mute all the bells of the people joining and leaving the meeting. Oh, hmm. Let me look into that. So I'm going to turn <laughs> my screen off and try to figure that out. And we're going to move on to business and marketing. And Francine, I'm going to let ask you to lead on that. And I'm just going to say goodbye for a second while I fix this issue. Okay. Um, so when we were planning, and then there we were, were three. <laughs> yes. Three of us. Dum dum dum. Survivor. Survivor 101. <laughs> Um, when we were talking about this um, yesterday, um, we were talking about how we have all this free time because, you know, we're not shooting anymore. We're not, you know, meeting our clients face to face. So um, one of the things that I had talked about was 
now that you have some free time, and I think every photographer really should be doing this, before you move on to other things, like other projects, um, like you really, really need to take some time to clean up your business. Not in the sense that we're all running really messy businesses, but I know when I'm in my busy season, I'm literally going from client to client to client to client. Like there is no development. There is no like, sometimes I don't even have time to like put away my stuff. My assistant comes and she puts everything away. So like now is the time you should have, you should be cleaning your studio packing away all your props, you know, making sure everything's clean, washing your dresses, if you guys use dresses, stuff like that. Um, your editing should be done. Well, you're lucky because you, you don't have it's to. It's a little it. less than dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Which is awesome. Um, um, finish your editing. Um, if you have orders to be placed, Regardless of if your labs are open or not, I know mine isn't because it's Patricia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, I'm sure, but, Rose, but Rose is still open. Like you yeah, can actually so still funny. submit your orders. So your orders should be put in. Your mm. editing should be done. Your studio should be cleaned. Everything should be done and ready and waiting and shiny for the day that you can open your doors of your studio again and start shooting because sherry said it just now um there is going to be like a huge demand and we're gonna be like pushed into a very busy season so please be ready for that um so that you can optimize on it so that's what I think my first point would be, is to just make sure everything is done. And I am so guilty of it because I have editing and I have so many orders. <laughs> it's really bad, so I need to do that. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading my notes. Yeah, so the other thing, after you do all the editing and all that stuff, um, I would think about, um, Again, when you're in your busy season, you're going from client to client to client, you don't have time to do the extra things that you want to add on to your business. Now, I'm not talking about education or anything like that. I'm talking about like, I really want to do um, some more print materials, but I don't have time to actually design them. Like now is the time to do that. Now is the time to fix up your website so that, um, you know, everything is, is perfect and really ready and waiting. So first, all your things that are, are going that um, have to be done, like editing again, um, your, your orders, stuff like that, and then your extra stuff, but it's more immediate, like fixing up your website, doing um, like your extra, extra ideas that you have in the back of your head to help your business even if it's starting a new studio like if you want to switch the to you know a fo photography studio um sorry software something like that like that all that stuff now is the time to do it so really really the whole point is just to be ready for your clients when we open <laughs> you open you open your doors again like ready totally ready <laughs> like nothing out of place Everything right. should be awesome, done. Francine. All your time is just awesome. Taking your clients. Okay, I'm sorry. I I'm really bad at this. This is my first time doing this webinar, and I can't find the thing where you can turn off the computer sound. So it's driving me a little bit nuts. Um, I'm gonna keep looking. Um, but in the meantime, Sherry, can we have your take on business and marketing? What have you? Yes. What do you think we can do? So one thing I just want to actually even add a point to future, like um, I'm actually going to more talk about current, uh, yeah. on how to keep your marketing to your current, uh, current clients. The one thing I just want to add, which also you can really uh, utilize and get ready for is your Google ads and your landing pages. And you don't actually have to run them, but you can actually get everything ready and set up. Um, so that way, like Francine said, like the second they say go, you push that button and you start marketing for any future clients. Um, okay, so my big thing that I'm doing right now uh, for my marketing is actually keeping in touch uh, with my current clients. 
I'm trying to, you know, keep alive and show people that I'm still posting. Um, I'm going back. So again, I'm a newborn family photographer. So I've actually gone back a year to see who, which newborns I've done. And I'm literally just posting happy birthday uh, messages with their newborn sessions or family portraits or, you know, shout outs to current clients and letting them know that I'm there with them and that, you know, I haven't closed up shop. Um, just to kind of keep things um, connected. And um, and a lot of my clients have loved it. They're like, oh, it's such nice. It's very nostalgic. It's it's just a really nice way to, you know, show them that you're kicking, still kicking around. Um, yeah. Another thing I want to touch, touch on a little bit is, uh, so as I said, we're all in this together and we're all feeling the, the brunt of everything. So there's no income for a lot of us. Uh, our income has literally gone to zero. So I've actually come up with a few different ideas, um, you know, to be also sensitive to the situation uh, with our clients, but how can we offer our current clients or even new clients um, uh, ways to purchase future sessions? Um, so one thing I, I came up with is, so I'm, I'm, I don't do anything for free. I'm sorry, I, I have a family to feed and, and I need to put food on the table and I don't care if situations or not. Um, so I'll never ever do a free session. However, um, you know, discounts for future bookings, even if they're like mini sessions, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, get creative with some new mini sessions ideas, um, outdoors, in studio, um, get creative with even projects that you have. Like I have a couple things, you know, um, ideas that I want to really push for new and um, current clients. Um, some other ideas, um, if you want to like offer some funky stuff, is you can do like dollar for dollar. So for every dollar your client spends, you will match that. You can offer gift cards um, for future sessions. You can offer payment plans to help them. And you can really sell it as, we are going to get through this. You're going to want to have like portrait sessions where you can hug your family. Like let's let's capture it, let's document it, you know? And, and all of these things is you can really try to even get small deposits and say, don't even worry. Like this is just a secure to know. And you can even say, we're gonna be in like major demand. So you may as well, you know, get your foot with us and, and save the date and really like, show them the value of what you can offer them. Um, one thing that I'm also like offering, so I'm IPS. Um, yes. However, like some of my clients may want to add more images to their wall. So you can offer them discounts um, for printed products. For those, you know, wedding photographers, if your clients haven't ordered an album, how great is it now to start doing albums for them at a discounted price? So there are ways of being able to still get income at even the smallest or largest amount um, and, and be able to somewhat sustain your business. Um, I, I think it's very, very possible. Okay, so I give up. I can't find the thing. So I'm sorry. The computer is going to chime and everyone's going to hear. I apologize. I will eventually figure it's okay, this out. Patricia. I think everyone just heard my little son say that he has to pee. So <laughs> it's okay. Actually, we didn't, but we know it. Now, well, now we didn't, but know. yeah, now we know. Now we know. Down <laughs> to tell me that he had to go and pee. That's what happened. Sorry, Wonderful. Guys. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Sherry. Um, I think that's great. Um, I'm yeah. sure, you know, we all, we all, those are great ideas, you know, and I think that everybody has like a way that they can do this for their clients. So for sure, keep yourself in the top of their minds, right? Keep, you know, saying, hey, I'm still here. I'm, I'm ready for you when you're, you, you get to come out of your house. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's great. I, I love it. I really okay. think like your ideas about generating some type of income is is a like is really good. Like I was just telling my friend how much I just I've made in the last month and it's I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say I'm oh, sorry, Francine. No, no, it's uh, okay, but we have a comment here um saying that 
there might be an issue with um, selling gift cards right now if it might make you ineligible for the CERB assistance. So you might want to check in with that and see like when the sale happens and how you have to report it and how that um, eligibility. Oh, a hundred percent. With that, so a hundred percent. You should always talk to like an accountant or yeah. you know do your research before adding. But there are some people. Who yeah. do not qualify because sure. they either have you know another small income from you know another like a secondary job or mm -hmm. something where it's not enough to sustain so that's why they do both yeah. and if you need to generate income you know through the photography to help you and you don't qualify um you know for the CR C red C E R B yeah the emergency um, you know if you don't qualify for it then yeah. you know, at this point just you just you got to do what you got to do right but again for sure but just check into it yeah 100%. Just, just yeah double check um how that would affect you before you know when you're doing sales okay trevor what do you have for us for marketing. business oh my god marketing yeah First i know off, you know <laughs> as as terrible a situation as this is uh, I yeah. think I'm going to echo both Francine and Sherry in saying that this is a stupidly amazing opportunity. I mean, so many of you us don't get say. Big, yeah, <laughs> like a lot of us get so busy that we just can't take on these bigger projects. Yeah, and yeah. now is one of those times. Like, I mean, I've gone through my website just as of late, and I was kind of rewriting the text because, you know, it, it's kind of an amalgamation of eight years of writing stuff somewhat yeah. technical somewhat loose and you know after reading it i, I looked at it and went that's not me that's that's yeah. really not how people come in through my studio and and that's not how i speak to people i don't right. i don't speak like a robot so maybe like, like you want to unify the voice like yeah I, the I tip it's over eight years I, sound I, I i added a few swear words in it like it's just <laughs> because that's me right yeah like i made it sound like me so if you read through the website and you talk to me you're like oh you wrote that you know yeah. so like things like that but also just the the website audits as sherry pointed out are super important and that's that's a big thing updating all those images on the site but also yeah. going past that and looking at subscriptions that you have um you know like if you're you if you were barely using a software um that you are paying 10 to 20 dollars a month for might yeah. be a good time to trim that expense off. Okay. Um, there's really no need for it. Um, I mean, that's why I typically always take the monthly option, even though it's more expensive in the long run. I don't right. know how relevant software is going to be, and but if I do it monthly, I can cancel almost whenever I want. So I usually do stuff like that at the end of the year, but now is not a bad time to kind of review what you're doing. Um, but uh, aside from my website, I'm also reviewing all my drip campaigns and and email responses to people like looking at my phone scripts like all that stuff like i'm putting everything under the microscope because i have time <laughs> sure you know as much as it sucks to be sitting here sometimes going man what am i going to do today then i just look at my whiteboard which is literally right up above me here and i go oh i got lots don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so um i think the the other thing that i've that since we since we talked um I had a friend dare me to do something yesterday and Ooh. this is this is kind of fun and i am going to stick to this because i'm going to do it right after we're done talking here and that is 20 right. days of facebook and instagram lives All so right. i'm going to talk so about me my business they may be two minutes long they may be 20 minutes long i don't know Very but cool. i'm just talking off the cuff i'm asking all of my customers and fans to to, to ask questions and to to find out whether I like cats or dogs more. I don't care. I'm going to talk about <laughs> it. But because I will tell you first and foremost, I hate having that stupid little phone in the gimbal, like looking at me and and recording me. I it drives me insane. Live events somehow are easier for me than a produced one. Because uh, no I'll kidding. do the same take 84 times and it's it looks exactly the same. But lives, <laughs> it's just one and done. So I'm kind of, and I and I want to do more of them, and I always find a way to convince myself not to. So now is my chance to really force myself and to do this 
and I'm gonna do it. I don't care. Okay. Um, All right, everybody, follow Trevor. Yeah. Provocateur just, images. Just, okay, we're gonna watch yeah, you. Provocateur we're watch you. underscore yeah. images on Instagram, and you'll find me on Facebook. You search that. But uh, that's gonna be the other thing. And the last thing I want to echo with what Francine said, it's really important, is have a look at your studio samples and what your product offerings are, because. Yep. We've, we've said this, and Patricia, you may have heard this while you were kind of digging through stuff. Yeah. GT imaging is open. Like, you can still submit an order. It may not get turned around as fast, but who cares? Like, if you have a sample in two weeks or four, what does it yeah. matter, right? But get it done now, because I typically replace my finished products, whether they be albums or matted folios or wall art or whatever the case may be, roughly every six months because I want them fresh and I want, I want things to look good and I want them to look current. So um, this is your time to do that. And, you know, like we can support each, you know, we can support all of our other, you know, partner businesses by doing stuff like that. And, you know, once you guys at GTA Imaging get the green light to go and come back in and start doing stuff, you know, we can yeah. start getting that stuff out. Plus when you, if, you know, depending on when that's finished, um, and ship to you, then you have something else to talk about on your lives. So like, <laughs> there's, there's like nothing but sure like that. And then you have lots of time to do the product photography for it. You have lots of time to yap about. Like this is yes. this is your time. So marketing is a is definitely a big thing, and everybody I think should get in on on board with this because I think my philosophy is going to be. When I come out of this, I'm going to be a lot stronger than our, than I went in. And if yeah, I can, I love it. And uh, do that. Yeah, I'll be all right. Amazing. I have nothing to write on to hold up my signs, but yeah, 100. percent Like, you <laughs> to okay, I'll do one for you then. Here. Yeah. <laughs> That's just going to be my thing. I have three. I have heck yeah, like and uh, and preach. So you know, if anybody needs one, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Thumbs up. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go into our third part of this webinar, and we're going to talk about education and how this is a great time to go back, revisit, or learn, and, you know, make ourselves stronger for uh, when the doors open. So, Shiri, you want to start and talk about education? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm actually feeling is that this whole crisis to me actually represents a reset button. Exactly kind of what Tre uh, Trevor said, right? Like you can- treasure, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. treasure, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he is a treasure. Ah, uh, he is. Yeah. Just, I, I can have a very different Freudian right. story, so that's pretty good. Um, so, you know, one thing is I really believe it, it is a reset button. Um, you have the opportunity now to go through and if you were ever, you know, considering even doing IPS, um, you know, changing your business model, uh, changing your packages, now is the time to sit down, really figure out what your cost of goods, like, you know, your business um, expenses are. The way that I look at it is every client now, previous or new, are also on like the same playing field. There, you know, it's a new world. Like that's how you should look at it. Is you, now you have the time to really figure out which products will work for you in your studio and that you want to sell and showcase that talks to you and your brand. Um, you know, what packages do you want to go? Do you want to do IPS? And it, there are, you know, there are. I don't even know, many and many different ways of doing IPS. Now is a time to really sit down with a piece of paper, lay it all out and yeah. figure out and, and talk out loud to yourself. Even do like a video chat with yourself and see if the words come to you smoothly. Like I've been doing IPS now for probably six years yeah. and I've probably changed three times. Uh, trying different techniques and yeah. only recently this yeah, last year so listen six years in of doing yeah. IPS and this yeah. final year I have never made as right. much money and sold as many products because I finally found the um, 
um, method and model yeah. that works for me that I can sell and that I, I, I just, I don't even sell it. I just talk about it and people can feel it. And now is the time for you to learn. One of the best ways of learning, yes. I'm gonna just interrupt just for a second. <laughs> yes. So I have one thing too actually after. Me so too. I'm getting questions. Oh, Sure. Wow. when we talk about IPS, what do we mean? IPS? So in-person sales. Thank you. Okay. Um, in-person sales as opposed to? Uh, All-inclusive. That's how I look at it. All-inclusive where a photographer provides? All the digital files the and, digital files, you know, yeah, or right. even if you just simply say, here's a, here's a gallery, select what you yeah. want. Right. That's what right. I was going to say. Mm. No, so exactly. instead of instead of a gallery or instead of all the digitals, you like, meet with the client. Yes, in person. Right, you meet with the client. So it's the it's a business model where yes. you'll meet with your client after you've taken the pictures. Yes, and and sort of with do a samples. consultation with them with samples. With so with samples. again, moving back yes. to your marketing, this right. is the time to really like I only sell what I show. And I'm sure many people have heard that. Um, I will typically never sell something. If someone, nobody will ever say to me, oh, well, do you have X, Y, and Z? If it's not in my studio, then typically like they'll never ask because they don't see it. They don't know to ask. You yes. are the, um, you're the leader. You have right. to direct them. You know, they first come to your door based on your um, art, based on yes. your personality based on everything. And then it's your job to direct them and hold them and massage them into what will look best in their home. What will their, you know, their heirloom items be for, you know, everything moving forward. Um, for sure. One Wait, thing. In I have, oh. Sorry, before, before you keep on going, Sherry, because we're going to get way past this. I just want to point out um, for the, the photographers who are afraid of switching IPS because you're afraid of losing clients now is the exact time to do it because we have no clients. That's what I mean. So Everyone's on the same level worried. field. Yeah, exactly. We are all now, like, unless you have some previous bookings, which I mean, they're working out, not really. So like, we're all going to start our, with our doors open with pretty much nobody. So you can't, you don't be afraid of saying, oh, well, I'm worried that my old clients won't come back because they're gone. <laughs> unless you're doing like do you know what i mean like now is the time no one's going to be like well last week my friend came and was like she got her digital files for 300 dollars." no 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 because there was no last week we, we we're going to be off for a, i don't know like two months something just a quick so question now, for those yeah just a quick question for those of you who do ips how would you say if somebody didn't have a studio can they still do ips yeah, I was about to say, I'm about to say something a little bit controversial to some <laughs> about how lately oh, I've been it, doing, oh yeah. So um, so some, I have a lot of clients who come to me from abroad and they don't want to come back for their IPS if they're not in the neighborhood or, or whichever. Uh -huh. So I've right. actually been doing a lot. I would say probably 70 to 80% of my IPS through Zoom, exactly how we're doing it. Um, I'm in the comfort of my, okay. you know, my own home. Um, okay. they don't need to see me, so I don't care if I look purple. They need to see their pictures <laughs> <laughs> and my, uh, my screen share is, you yes. know, it is perfect. Um, now the thing is, is I do the, um, the showcase of the gallery the same way as I would do it in the studio. I show them a slideshow, right? I don't say I have music. I say yeah. nothing when the slideshow is finished. We go through their images. We figure out which ones they're going to purchase. We go right. through. Now, here's the kicker. Here's, here's what makes it easy. If I know that I'm going to be doing a Zoom IPS, I do not let them leave the studio with me doing a full walkthrough of albums, wall art. Um, I also have like, uh, obviously I've taken images um, of my, like a product guide. So I make sure that I have a screen share of my product guides so it can remind them which one they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's the one we want. That you know, whether it's like a standout versus a wood mound versus a canvas. They've, they've seen all this stuff when you're, when you're taking the pictures. Yes. So if someone doesn't have a studio when they're taking pictures, should they bring the products yes. with them to the yes. session? Yes. Right. Yeah. So bring and it doesn't have to be big. They don't have 
but I know somebody who brings in a big 30 by 40 each time. Yeah. They're not heavy. They're big, but they're not heavy. If you have a car, it'll fit in your trunk or the back seat. If you don't, well, bring a couple of smaller ones. I know some people who have like a rolly suitcase, they do that. Yeah. And they'll bring bring a little rolly suitcase with 11 by 14s, right? But bring it out and bring You know, I just have a bunch of stuff oh. that I drag along with me and yeah. it worked. You know what, I was very scared of making that transition. Uh, screen captures, what are they going to do? Uh, is it gonna reduce the, the sale, uh, honestly? People you know are in the comfort of their own home. I don't have to worry about leaving at night and driving and or they don't go to the studio. I have to drive to the studio anyways. So yeah, yeah. I'd rather stay home. Like, you know, like I don't have an in-home studio. I have a commercial space. Like, I don't want to drive there. If I'm gonna drive there, like I just it's it's really um it, it's really helped a lot. Like I, I feel um just calmer, like not calmer. What's the word I'm looking for? Just it's yeah. you're relaxed it's not like a nervous proposition right you know no i have jennifer gilbert who um does ips at home and she's offered to speak to that um sir, i'm gonna chime you in okay i'm gonna turn your screen on so you ready okay uh yeah okay okay <laughs> Wait, let me see where you're saying jennifer Wait, gilbert jennifer. hello jen hi, hi. How are so you feeling, you Jen? See, you I okay? I'm fully prepared to speak on camera. <laughs> you, you look beautiful. I miss you. Okay. I so you I have to say, say you know, so I've only ever done in-home IPS where I go to their house and I have like a bin and the biggest product I bring with me is 16 by 24. Um, because I can't, like really to bring a 20 by 30 would be ridiculous, right? So I can't okay. get stuck in my car. So I bring a canvas, I bring, um, I have a canvas, a frame canvas, a float mount, a flush mount, and um, a couple of albums. Cause those wow, are the- Wow, you bring a lot. I do, it's a little heavy. Um, <laughs> but um, but I, I've streamed my product line so that, I'm, that that's all I sell now. And um, you know, it, you can either, oh, sorry. The other thing I do sell, which I just started last year is the story box. So it's, it's the 11 by 14 Ashwood box with 10 fine art watercolor prints in it. Yeah. Um, that's actually been really popular with my clients and then they get the wood block with it and do like the Ikea shelf or whatever, right? So, um, um, so that's actually been a good hit. Yeah. And <laughs> are you taking screenshots there? Uh, yeah, I got, an I got an Instagram story this. What do you want? No, I'm I, not. I, I, hold on, let I'm me do a screenshot. That's cool too. There's a little button at the top <laughs> of your screen. Hold on. Screenshot. What did I just do? Hold on. Oh I'm going to take a there. screenshot now, okay? Okay, everyone okay. smile. One, two, three. Got it. <laughs> Okay. All right. Back to business here. <laughs> so um, now, because I live in a small town, most of my clients are either in town or they're about maybe 10, 15 minutes away in in like a neighboring town. Um, so I don't mind doing the drive. That kind of thing. I mean, if the weather's bad, then we'll reschedule. Um, so I go to their house. I do. I hook up to their TV usually. Um, if I'm noticing, oh. like sometimes the TVs are really red, so I will tell them up front. I say your images might look red, but if, here's my computer screen to compare to, um, and we just hook up through like their HDMI. So I used to bring like a little monitor with me, and that got to be a bit too cumbersome. And then, same as what Sherry was saying, we we do. I do a presentation to music. I use Pro Select, um, and then I, I use Pro Select also. And then I help them narrow down their images to their, because I usually present like 50 or 60 images and we get down to like their favorite 20 or 30. And then from there they decide, okay, what wall collection would they like or what, um, you know, what maybe they want a giant picture. So which one of that do they want? Um, do they want a digital package? And so we go through that whole thing Amazing. with them. So in, all in all, it's probably like an hour of my time, maybe 90 minutes if they're a little indecisive. And like what Sherry was saying um, earlier, let them talk because they will talk themselves into the sale, you know, and then I've got the products all, uh, well, my dog's joining me now, um, <laughs> but I've got the products all laid out there for them and they can touch them and they can feel them and it really helps them make a decision on what they want for their home. Um, and then once, you know, everything's said and done, I get the order placed obviously through GTA because they're the best and, um, and then, you know, we get it to them. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's, I really enjoyed it. I've been doing it 
I've been in business for 12 years and I've been doing in-home IPSs for uh, what's 12 minus four, eight years. So the first four years, <laughs> come on, I can't do math this late at night. It's okay. Um, it's okay. Um, Love it. Love it. Yeah. So, but the first like three or four years I did online galleries and my sales were just pathetic, just absolutely pathetic. And when I switched to IPS, my sales tripled immediately. So I have a question from Anna. <laughs> Anna asks, um, she says, I travel to see my clients for consults and my primary reason to see clients in advance is not only to discuss their needs, but also to show them the quality of the finished products and discuss mm -hmm. pricing, which ties in with seeing and touching my samples. Yeah. How do you pr propose right. this could be done via Zoom? I can't wrap my head around how to communicate the beautiful quality of work to justify the cost to the client via a screen. Please provide suggestions. Hmm. Uh, product guide, a product guide is great. So, yeah. you know, take photos of every angle with, so GTA on their website offers great descriptions of their products. Um, I would literally do like a magazine style product guide that has yeah. very big images from how it looks angled and straight, you know, even photograph it on a wall, like literally get a nail in your wall and put it on a wall and photograph it or on the floor and just make it look delicious on paper. And, um, and that way, like the truth is, is, and you can also Vanna White it, you know, a lot of things that you can do is you can show them the product guide, have the product sitting beside you. And I would literally be like, Ooh, do you see this glass of water? It's this tall. And like, <laughs> You know, really just, you know, uh, have fun with it. And um, and if you believe it and you, there it is, there's our Vanna. Ooh. So, um, you know, I, I understand about the, the touch and feel. I 100% do. It, it makes all the difference in the world. Even, yeah. you know, uh, you know, providing somebody a digital file versus, uh, you know, providing somebody a print. Nothing is in comparison, but um, I, I think that that's what I would do anyways. So yeah, so um, further to that, because I was up to very like last night was struggling about throwing my sales and doing like online galleries because I am all IPS. Yeah. So I'm going to try up Zoom. And one of the things that I am going to do is I'm going to do videos of every product that I offer and I'm going to oh, make a, kind of a video to share in my yeah. Zoom IPS. Um, yes. And I'm literally gonna be like, I don't have anything here, but I'm gonna hold things and be like, I'm gonna do my exact sales presentation on on video and then just run through every Zoom, um, like yeah. run it when we're doing the Zoom session. So I think I'm gonna even, you could even take that further because um, it's really, really important to prepare your clients beforehand. Um, even before you shoot their session, that the product, the final product is something hanging on your wall or something like, you know, an album. It's yeah. not your digitals on Facebook. It's a final product, tangible product. And a way to do that, and I'm going to do this, is um, doing like a product guide and posting it either on your website or Instagram or wherever it is that your clients find you and they can go through like say for example in your stories and go through like your product line and and just really from the very beginning even before they find you stress the fact that your final product your final end game is something hanging on your wall or like a printed product somehow I love it that's I love it. Trevor uh, for Anna Thanks so much, Francine. And Jennifer um, and Shiri, I'm wondering maybe later, Francine and you two, uh, maybe we'll have a webinar later for an IPS. Yeah, we've Sorry? gotten completely off yeah. topic, but so, yeah, we got I, can uh, I can talk about IPS happening? all day long. So, so could I. Yeah, oh, 100%. I would love so, to. So let's, oh, yeah. We'll, you know, maybe we'll schedule one for maybe next week or something. And just only talk about IPS because I think <laughs> you have three hours. <laughs> I know we we've done what you know workshops here in the studio about IPS, right? But I think this is like where I'm getting a lot of questions about it and how 
you know, what it how is, to, how do you do it, and, you know, who would be involved, yeah. and they're asking you, for you to do it, so let's, we'll get on that, all right? Perfect. Yay. Um, I do have, I do have one more point about my education, which is just, That's I think true. everyone will completely relate to this, with all of the time that we have on our hands, I mean, yeah. in truth, uh, Creative Live, any videos or any workshops, online workshops that you purchased and have never <laughs> looked at them and they're sitting in your library, yeah. now is the time to go through and, uh, you know, get that <laughs> done. Hey, that is totally, that was totally my point. You just took it. <laughs> hey, it's on my list. I didn't take it. It's on mine. I have it here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I must have put on the notes. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, on that creative live note, I actually yeah. learned to do IPS um, on a class that I paid $100 for. And um, now, like, sales is my main source of income. And it was awesome. like I love it. a $100 investment. And I learned everything from that one class. So um, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So we're all going to get on this IPS bandwagon. I love it. <laughs> all right, I'm done. So, so that was my last I point. So, okay. I'm next. You are next. Uh, okay. I'm going to turn again. Should we let Jennifer go? Jennifer, thanks so much. I'm not so supposed much. to be here. <laughs> I know, but we miss seeing you. Oh, uh, thanks. Right. But yeah, let me, we'll talk about the IPS thing afterwards. Yes. Yes. All okay. right. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we were talking about education. So basically, yeah. exactly what Sherry just said, all the yeah. education you have Everything. purchased, yes. now is the time. Now is the time. Like, I have probably three or four years of Milky Way education that I have never done. Uh, <laughs> on top of all, like, the fine art photographers that I absolutely love that I may watch in the background while I'm editing, but that's not going to be good enough now because now is the time to actually learn. Sit down um, and and get a notebook, however, the best way you learn, and, and learn. Trevor, I'm trying not to take your point. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, I got other stuff to talk about. Um, okay. but yeah, like now, now is the time to actually really learn. And it's not only about business education. There's a lot of, um, say like, you know, learn lighting techniques that you don't have, you don't have a chance to try with your existing clients because you have to shoot what works, but now you don't have to shoot what works because we have no clients. So, you know, get, a, get a doll if you don't Matter have a baby or get like your kids or your dog or you yourself and and you know learn those lighting techniques learn the stuff that you want to learn learn different editing um like really really hone your techniques again yeah. going back to what i said earlier make sure you are sharp and ready because when you open your doors you're not going to have the time anymore so learn all the stuff that you want to learn um technique wise and you know photograph e wise um <laughs> as well as as your business stuff all right that's mine thank you francine i like it i like it a lot and i'm sure it applies to a lot of people out there who have you know things waiting waiting to get done right another day waiting for you know when we have time on our hands you're right this is right like a lot okay. of the time, sorry, one more thing. A lot of the time is like, we're always so concerned about, you know, making money. Like, and the best way to make money is sales. Like that, that is the best way to make money. Um, yeah. But like, you have to make sure that you can sell your images. Like you can't just, you know, make sure your skills are on point so that you can actually sell your images. Um, Bang when on. I first started confidence, confidence, and the confidence will come with yes. that. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, like my mother-in-law was like, oh, well, anyone will buy pictures of their kids because I was terrible. <laughs> and that was her nice way of saying, like, you really suck. You need to work on your stuff. Um, <laughs> I remember like, it just sticks in my head. So, like, you know, learn posing. Like, if you want to learn your posing, you want to learn your lighting, like, you know, make sure that you are on point as a professional photographer um, yes. and that you are actually confident in selling your images. For sure. Great point. I love them. 
Okay, we're going to go on to Trevor. Trevor, okay. what do you have for us? Education. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm going to echo Francine in the sense of, uh, and also Sherry, with watch all those videos you've had uh, in your archive. I mean, it's kind of like I, I equate it to books, right? Like yeah. you, you'd buy books way back in the day. You'd put them on the shelf to make it look like you're smart, but you've never actually read them. Yeah. So the videos I feel are like today's books um, and I've got yeah. a whole stack of them, but um, I'm going to elaborate on one thing Francine said is that, you know, you had mentioned watching them in the background where you're doing something else. I think for these videos to be really, truly beneficial, you've got to separate yourself from doing something else. You need to, like, I find it better, like, I'm sitting here at my desk and, you know, my laptop will go beep because I have an email. And then my phone goes beep because I got something else. Shut that nonsense off and just go watch it on the TV. Um, I don't care what's with a glass of wine, an adult beverage of your choice, or just sitting there on the couch. But just at least do yourself a favor and put some effort into learning, like, in a dedicated yes. environment. Turn off the music. Just Concentrate. Be focused. Yeah. Um, yes. Take your notebook, write stuff down, rewatch right. if you need yeah. to, um, but really give yourself the chance to learn some of this. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things I want to get better at, because I think a lot of other photographers will probably feel the same way. So first thing um, I'm going to get better at is promo videos. I am going to get wicked good at that. Um, I that look at a nice. lot of other I like that. photographers, yeah. photographers in general, people who make B-roll for a living. Um, you know, like I look up to guys like uh, Peter McKinnon, like who have like the most sickest videos ever. And I'm like, they're not that hard. They're, yeah. they're just, you just need to know how to edit. And I want to get better at Final Cut. Hard, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Um, it, it's just, you, you got to watch some of these things. It is amazing what is out there on YouTube. I mean, Mike Sasser, who's a boudoir photographer out in LA, he did this one great video on like how to shoot a demo reel. And you need like either your cell phone, a secondary camera, and that and a tripod. And I'm like, why am I trying to turn this into the next Quentin Tarantino movie when I'm doing it? Can you not just keep it simple? So I think learning how to, to not only capture good quality video, but also um, turn that into a good looking video. So it's like two parts. It's kind of like taking the picture and knowing how to use Photoshop. It's just now you're recording video and using Final Cut or Premiere or whatever the software would be. But learn those things. And you don't have to know Premiere or Final Cut at an advanced level to make a decent promo video. Um, yeah. Because I'm gonna- I'm It's gonna encouraging. Because it sounds, I, I, it sounds I, I, scary. It sounds scary because we're like yeah. stills people. It's like, oh, what the yes. hell? Oh. <laughs> like we, we, we freak ourselves out about it, and I'm guilty of that, and you don't need to. Um, you, you, you think I mean, if I, asked, Sorry. if I ask the group, and, and I mean, you don't have to answer this in the chat or anything, but just honestly okay. ask yourself this. Do you know Photoshop like the most advanced user ever? No. No. You need to know not. what it needs for you to do, yes. right? I know what it needs for it. I, I, I probably, I, I'm going to selfishly say, I know Photoshop really well. I probably know Photoshop a little better than the average user. But who gives a crap? Because I barely use that level, right? I yeah. use probably 5% of that application in a day-to-day -day sure. what I do. Right. So, you know, you only need to learn as much as you need to know. Um, okay. You know, like it's, and, and video is actually a lot of fun and I'm trying to do more of it. That's why I'm trying to do these lives because they kind of blend into that. And I'm also trying to be honest with my following. Um, and this is where the education yeah. comes for me. I am a super, um, not, I wouldn't say introverted, but I'm a private person. I do not sure. let people into my life. I made yep. a post uh, yesterday because it was World Autism Awareness Day and my daughter's yes. autistic. Yes. None of my clients knew that pretty much, right? Like well, I, I don't either. share stuff like that. The fact yeah. that I'm saying this now to a whole broadcast of people, I don't do that, but I'm right. trying to, and that's part of my learning curve that I want to get better and be more approachable and just be more real on my videos as much as I humanly can be. 
because I think it goes a long way. I mean, in the genre that I shoot, boudoir, as a guy, I have to be relatable. I have to be trusted. I have to yeah. be approachable. For I sure. can't just be the dude behind the camera. So that's part of my yeah. learning. Um, and then um, I think this one was one I, we didn't talk about yesterday, but it came to me later because I thought long and hard about it. And it was actually something that I was doing with a friend. And we were um, we were offering to do website reviews for each other. So this sort of fits into marketing. Oh. But the website review by a friend is like, I'm trying to get you to go in and break it. Like, I want you to look at it as a new face customer, read the text, tell me what works, tell me what doesn't work. And if it yeah. doesn't, you need to let me know. And then we just trade off. So we just we just swapped reviewing each other's sites. And really I'm learning yeah. what she is doing really well. And she's learning what I'm doing really well. And then we both right. get to implement it. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think that's another really good opportunity you have. And if you've got people in your forums, because I mean, you know, like whatever genre photography you have, you you have other people you probably interacted with and you may trust a little more than others, you know, fire up a little chat and just say, hey, looking to trade like website reviews and, and just see sure. what, who says what, um, you know, and you know, you might end up doing two or three of these. Um, and here's the one best tip I'm going to give everybody. When you ask somebody to do a review of your site, do not get them to do it on a desktop computer. Do not get them to do it on an iPad. Get them to use their phone. If I, I would, I would yeah. bet you, and I bet you a lot of money, that if you look <laughs> at your Google Analytics numbers right now, your website traffic is probably 80-20 mobile to desktop with 100%. like a 1% yeah. maybe of tablet. I promise you, most of us have not looked at our sites on our phones yeah, and that is right. that is something I started doing very seriously about six months ago. And yeah, I told my friend when we did this, I said, I'm not even gonna look at it on a desktop. You are 100% getting the mobile experience. And she's like, okay. be yeah. nice. <laughs> but you know, like other than just That's spacing changes really and stuff point. like that, it's, I beg you, please look at your site on a mobile device, not a desktop. Because they all look great on desktops. They all load great. Yes. Desktops. Yes. You have to look at all it right. on a mobile device. Because that's how you're I really customer. like that, Trevor. That's great. Because well, I think I have to apply that thing. for us too. It's sort of a learning <laughs> thing. I wasn't sure where it goes. So yeah. there you go. Um, no, I but like that's, it. I think all I had in there. Yes, that is the last point I had. So that's great. Because sure. we're we're over we're past nine o'clock and I really <laughs> I really appreciate everyone <laughs> staying in with us and uh, sticking to this webinar. Um, I know that there's a lot of great information there. We're gonna stay on for a few more minutes. If you have any more questions, please do type them in. I have a question from Justella and she's asking, Trevor, when you were talking about videos, would it be helpful to hire someone to do your videos, especially if you don't have time to learn yourself? And where, <laughs> Where would you find good videographers who can make promo videos at a reasonable rate? Oh, oh, oh. me, me, yes. me, me, me. Yes, me, Trevor. Me. <laughs> um, so, yes, absolutely. Like, I am not an accountant. I don't want to learn accounting, so I hire an accountant. I don't really like retouching, so I hire retouchers. Um, videographers are no different and um i've done a lot of really cool trades for services because there's a few videographers that want to great. do bar sessions so yeah. i traded them for that other times i've just contracted somebody for a day and i've arranged um clients like who come in with the understanding that we are recording video that day in their session and there's going to be somebody over my shoulder doing roll stuff and then also um, they're going to interview people. So we have exit and enter interviews that we can then splice yeah. and create a, an interesting video. And then that other B-roll, and by B-roll, I mean like secondary footage, not like somebody yes. talking or not me doing something specifically, but like those in-between shots. So like yes. you have sequence one, sequence two, and you need something to just kind of cover up the transition, that's B-roll. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, you could hire somebody. I mean, Get out onto to various sites like Fiverr. Um, Fiverr's a huge, I'm a huge fan of that. I mean, it's a little bit more geared to um, 
uh, more like web development, SEO, uh, Facebook and Google marketing, but occasionally you'll find some videographers in there. Um, I have a point too. That's where you are on your screen. I don't know. Yeah, you're you're down for me. I actually have okay. a point too. So depending on the genre um, that you are shooting, you can also kind of look at other photographers' websites and see if they have promo videos. If you like what they've done, a lot of times they will have like an end quote or you'll be able to find that videographer. So like mm -hmm. I actually have done promo videos for my studio. I have hired a uh, videographer, a cinematographer, uh, to do my behind the scenes and my promo, like on my website. I have so that was an awesome video, Shiri. If oh, you, anyone you. hasn't seen it, go on to Shiri's website. She has an amazing behind the scenes video about like her holding the baby and like doing this thing to the baby to make it go to sleep. And it's awesome. You know, everyone uh, should have a crocodile Dundee thing to the baby. Like, yeah, she does this thing where she like she's a massage the temple and the baby falls asleep. So, and I'll be happy to share the person who did it. Um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a, you know, share. So, sharing yes. is caring. Um, so yeah. yeah, like the and and the truth is, is so not only did I find the cinematographer that I wanted to use. I also went in with key points of what kind of feel that I wanted to emulate from others that I've seen, how, what I want to say, what's my message, um, you know, and, and how to, how do I get people to trust me on video? Yes, because so, you know what, you come so, off as a consummate professional. That's, that's what that video was. It was like, thank you. I yeah. know my stuff. That's what the video was. So I, I loved it. Thank you. But that's why video so is so important these days. Like you cannot, we cannot ignore this as photographers and just have a website full of pretty pictures anymore. You have to have right. behind the scenes, even if it's just simple stuff, grab your iPhone, like this little DJI gimbal-y thing, it's 170 bucks. It's the best $170 I ever spent. It's how I make all my videos in my studio. I don't even use my DSLRs for this. I use my iPhone for everything. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be complicated, yeah. but when you want to invest in that top tier thing as Shiri did, then do that. But don't think you got to go spend a ton of money right off the bat for videos. You you can do a lot yourself. It's scary almost yeah. how much you can edit on your phone. Okay, Francie, yeah. why don't kind of you fun. put your last point and then we're going to talk about some, uh, some news you have, Francine, about uh, something you have planned. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm just going to be the devil's advocate here in terms of, of video, because in this day and age, everybody wants to see behind the scenes. It doesn't, it almost might be a favor to you to take a video with your iPhone and then show like your edited images at the end of the video. Um, mm -hmm. So like, don't let it be a deterrent to um if you don't want to if you don't have the money right now to invest in a videographer like do some stuff on your own there's like tons of software online yeah. that you can kind of put stuff together and it looks it looks fairly good um so just start somewhere like nothing something is better than nothing at yeah. this point instead oh of God. just being like okay oh, one day i want to do all these beautiful videos just do something now. It's like, I'm going to do, gonna do all of the above. Like, oh, we're, we're, Here, like I'll next to life and preach. Oh, my oh, God. My something is better than something. nothing. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, like, just don't, don't be, don't. Don't wait for the day that you have millions of dollars in the bank to invest in something like that. Like, just do it now and, and you know, search some best video editing on, on the Internet. And you know, you know, buy the program or like pay the month, do the trial, and see if it works for you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Amazing. Like, don't don't and, wait. And by the way, um, you can also approach this a couple ways with regards to how you get this video out. If you rec sometimes, if you record a bunch of video, you you can actually just find an editor for the video, right? Yeah. Like you don't have to necessarily have somebody come into your studio who is a That's videographer a and editor. Yes. You yeah. can do one or the other, right? Like if you were good at video editing, but you just needed somebody behind the scenes to operate the camera, you could do that too. That's um, so it's not always an all in one kind of thing. For sure. I like that. 
Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up. We're over about 10 minutes, but Francine, you have a big announcement for us. Oh, no, now I'm so nervous. No, don't be. <laughs> um, no, this is a great yeah. idea. It's a great time to do it. And everybody, it'll give people a reason to go through their pictures, It, you know, because they're going to do it for their website and their IPS and whatever. So since you're going through your images anyways, you can. Um. So, yeah, it's a competition. <laughs> yeah. I'm so nervous. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm organizing an image competition. Uh, it's called I love creative it. awards um and basically what got me going was two things um one i miss all the competition deadlines this year except like two i have a sticky here um because i was so busy and then like um you know mother nature put us all into time out which is now so um <laughs> i thought that's what i'm gonna call this i'm just gonna call this mother, mother nature's, nature's time out <laughs> Yeah, we are in timeout. Like we are absolutely thinking about our past decisions in timeout. That's what's happening. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's an image competition. It is for everybody um, in you know everywhere. Uh, there's no limitations. Everyone on who's a way. photographer. Yes. So you must be a professional photographer, meaning you uh, sell your work and make some type of money as a professional. Um, so no amateur photographers or hobbyists at this point. Um, and uh, the deadline for the images is April 19th. Um, there is no, um, it is a limit. So there's eight ca categories and you can um, enter three different images for each category. Um, and instead of like the big competitions that have an image fee for each image, there's just like a small um, competition fee, which kind of is probably going to go towards prizes. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. We have some great judges. Trevor is one of them. Hey, Trevor. <laughs> Yay, Trevor. Um, I can be Brad. Uh, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> no. no. I can be Brad um, without no. door time. That that would be. Oh <laughs> A few other ones, um, Patricia and GTA is image, um, is sponsoring it, and uh, so is Sprout Studio. I have a few people who are still getting back to me about um, sponsorship, so uh, probably stay tuned for that. And um, there is an Great. Instagram page, it is called Creative Image Awards, so follow me and then you'll get, um, well not follow the page, and you guys will get all the information. So I'll send you some information too and a follow-up email to everyone who registered for this. And we're gonna have a uh, recording available. And since we're on the, you know, we're talking about videos, I just wanna remind everyone, we have a YouTube series that Trevor hosted for us called Photographers Drinking Coffee, Talking Business. And there's an episode there with Francine. There's an episode there with Sherry. Um, we have, you know, more with uh, Diego and Lisa with uh, Karen Biker from Reflections of Life and Anthony and Lehman from Lemons and Ants Studios. So if you have a chance, go check out our YouTube channel, GTA Imaging, look for those videos, and we're gonna have this available. I'll have some information for you regarding more IPS information, IPS webinar. Eric asked whether we have a wedding IPS person here, but not on this panel, but we do have something scheduled. Uh, something in the works with Diego and Lisa, who are um, wedding uh, photographers, and um, I'm talking with other photographers, and hopefully we'll get some more uh, these types of series going. So I'm going to have all this information for all of you, and I want to say thank you, Trevor, Sherry, Francine, love you all, mwah, 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 mwah. and to everybody who joined us, and watch this all. I really appreciate it. It's really great to um, know that you're all out there and we're gonna be in it together. Um, stay safe, everyone. Thanks, Alina. Um, I wish I could see you all and give you big hugs. I miss you. It's really, it's so quiet in the lab um, and it's, it's a different kind of feeling, you know? So, bye everyone. Bye, 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 bye. We'll talk to you again soon, okay? Signing off. Talk to you later.